16 heats have flashed before the Robot Wars crowd. 16 winners have pirouetted. The house robots dodged. The arena negotiated. Opponents toppled. Their hopes burnt out. Let the wars begin! So let's race into the first of our semi-finals. Eight robots, only two survive. What's your tactics going to be? Kill them. There is no mercy! We need a bet. Bet in the house! Mechanical medics are must on Robot Wars! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the master of mayhem, Craig Charles. This is where things get serious, because tonight our first eight heat winners return for the first of our series semi-finals. It's going to be gruesome, it's going to be gory, so are we going to give them hell? The robots face a deadly knockout competition and only the last two standing will return for the grand final Robot Wars the Armageddon. So, if you're fired up for fury, let the semi-final begin! Coming up, Craig, four terrific first round fights. Dan Tom Keir will be meeting Gravity. Exterminator will fight St. Agro. Bulldog Breed meets Tough as Nails. But first up, Tornado, who reached the semi finals by disposing of Tetanus in the heat. And Raging Nightmare who surprisingly beat the seeded Spawn again to get this far. From Sawtree in Cambridgeshire and number one seed, Tornado. Reigning champions and former World Championship semi-finalists. The busyness that's going on at the Tornado bench looks immense. Lads, how does Tornado deal with flippers? Try and stay out of the way of the flipper, it's about the only way. Um, if a machine is a particularly renowned flipper, we'll use a, a, a weapon that is very difficult for them to get under, like the uh, flail scoop. But for Raging Reality, they're a good flipper, they've won their heat. Their flipper edge is not very wide, so we've gone for the disc, and it might do some damage to their armour, so we shall see. A four-wheel driven pushing box, basically, with the interchangeable weaponry, the disc, a large vertical bar, spinner lifters, the chain flail, durable, but it is vulnerable to flippers. From Colville in Leicestershire, Raging Nightmare. Impressive winners of Heat N. So what are your tactics going to be? Because they're a pretty powerful machine and they've got the experience and everything behind them. Yeah, they've got the pushing power, but um, if we can just get one or two shots underneath, they may be out. They're putting their spinner on the a front. A spinner, yeah. Well, we've been against a spinner in the um, in the heat, and all we get was cosmetic damage. Well, lads, good luck. It is for a place in the grand final. It's starting to get exciting now, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's starting to get Nervous. very exciting. Very powerful flipping weaponry, 98 kilos in weight, but the body armor is lightweight, and that's the Achilles heel. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the teams then. Raging Nightmare first, Nigel Padgett captaining, Liam Markham Summers in there as well. And there's the Tornado team, Andrew Marchant, the captain, David Gamble and Brian Moss, Brian in the middle. In the arena for the house robots, Shunt. Dead Metal 2, two veterans. Three, two, These machines have a Robot Wars pedigree and Tornado already in underneath Raging Nightmare and slamming them against the arena sidewall, using the flipper to self-right Raging Nightmare. Expending energy though, every time it flips, Tornado is dogged in its pursuit, relentless. It has the spinner in front. Oh, what's up to Shunt? Well, we were looking through the eye of the Shunt camera and over went 
shunt, tossed over by Raging Nightmare. Look at this from a different angle. The flipper and underneath shunt, and shunt was busying itself with Tornado, and over they went. Good attack by Raging Nightmare, but uh, uh, you're actually supposed to be attacking the little red thing on wheels called Tornado, reigning champions. Number one seed, there's a clue. Tornado, after you, into the CPZ slam. Bang. Oh, no thank you, ma'am. Oh, and another side assault here. And each time Tornado whacks a robot, that's 100 kilos hitting you at 10 miles an hour. And that'll shake loose electronics and controls and render immobile. And I think they've done just that. It is not the most flamboyant of robots, but it is a terrific champion. They defeated the former world champions, Razor, to win the Sixth Wars, and they are through the first round of this, the first semi-final. Tornado, and out the raging nightmare. Disappointment for them, they've come so far. They were pushing us down the back corner. As soon as we hit the wall, we don't know. We just, it just wouldn't flip back. It was drivable, yeah. but we just couldn't self right. You're disappointed. Hmm. I bet you look a bit gutted, actually. <laughs> well, yeah, but good robot. Fine robot. But I mean, it's the first time you've made the semi-finals. Your robot's improving all the time, isn't it? Every time we just get that little bit further. Let's hear it for Raging Nightmare! Bullying, really, wasn't it? Um, oh, I think we got off extremely lightly there. I mean, they've got an awesome flipper. I've got a very powerful fl flipper, but they couldn't flip it. They couldn't get anywhere near you. You're too yeah. fast. Well, Andy did an absolutely marvellous job of driving in that one. He just dodged it every time, and then we managed to get them in the corner a few times, and it, their flipper obviously broke, so they couldn't get themselves back up again. The robot's really controllable, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of Tornado's strengths. It's uh, always been one of the best things about it, that we can put it where we want, when we want it. Well, um, do you think you can stay in the arena? Um, there's more than 50% flippers left out there. Yeah. We don't like them, but we'll take on all comers and try. But no, I think we'll be going out, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got any surprises left from Tornado? Any, any new weapons? Any special adaptations? Uh, we still haven't used weapon number four, right. but it's not really suited for flippers, so we may never see it, unfortunately. But uh... Well, good luck, guys. You're the reigning UK champions. Let's see if he can go all the way. Try and stay there. And hang on to that title. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Team Tornado! Well, join me after the break for more hot semi-final action here on Robot Wars. Coming up after the break, two more terrific fights for you. Dan Tomke against Gravity of Holland and Exterminator fighting St. Agro. Don't forget, only two machines survive tonight's semi-final. Welcome back. Tornado's march towards a second successive UK Robot Wars title continues. They're already through tonight to the second round, beating Raging Nightmare in sterling style. Welcome back to Robot Wars and the first of our series semi-finals. Eight Heat winners are fighting head-to-head -to, -head to go through to the next round. So, let's see who's up next. The number five sees Dan Tomkia, Craig. They beat Scorpion in their heat before finally disposing of IG88 in flipping style. And they meet Gravity from Holland, hugely powerful against the seeded 13 Black. And then Lightning, and even the house robots. From Chertsey in Surrey, and number five seed, Dan Tomkia. Seeded after reaching the semi finals of the last wars as well. What is the feeling like when it gets down to this stage in the pits between all the Robotiers? Does it start to get sort of 
you look at each other's machines, sizing each other up, or is it still a friendly atmosphere? It's a very friendly atmosphere. We make sure each other's machines are in tip-top condition so that when we fire them, beat them hopefully, uh, we have beaten the best that they can produce, which is a much better feeling. Right, now you are up against the bad boys of the Seventh Wars, that's what I've been calling them. They're very naughty, they've had a yellow card and they've flipped millions of house robots. Yeah. Um, but I believe their machine is taken from your design. Yeah, my pneumatic system, which was rather new, unique about a year, two years ago, um, it was copied by the Dutch a while back. We went to Holland to have a, a robot rumble out there and they stripped our machines apart to find out how we did things. And, uh, well, we help them. I mean, there's no problem at all. Um, Camerati, you've got to be the best to be the best. What on earth does that all mean? Uh, has a high-powered CO2 flipper with full-body spinner capability, very reliable, and at 20 miles an hour is twice as fast as gravity. From Leuwarden in Holland, gravity. A previous heat final in Dutch Robot Wars and getting more and more impressive by the day. It's the bad boys of the Seventh Wars. How are you feeling? Pretty good. What are you hoping to do in this final? Uh, get rid of Dan Tomkia. It's, it's uh, one opponent and it's the best I've had so far. So, uh, And uh, of all the 15 other robots left in the competition, it's the only one I'm scared of. So what's your tactics going to be once you get out there? Flip out of the arena, if that's possible. Flip up the flip up. Well, it's both skill and luck. If you're lucky enough to get under the other robot, you're able to flip him. If they're under you, they're going to flip you. Slightly the heavier, certainly the longer. Uh, powered by two 750-watt electric motors. Very strong. They say this can drive through a car, but the armor isn't the most resilient. Roboteers, stand by. The masters, the Lamberts, Michael and Daniel, and Stephen Gadsby of Dan Tom Kia. The apprentices who learnt from them, W.J. Dijkstra, Alex and Jeroen, and Gravity. And Shunt. And Sergeant Bash. The house robots on patrol. Three, two, one. Activate. On cue, the second battle in this, the first semi-finals. Dan Tom here! <laughs> Over and out! Simple as that! Cease. How quick was that done? That stunned even them. They can't believe it. Let's see how long it took. One, two, three, four, five. Cease called on six seconds. I make it. Have to be confirmed. Has to be one of the fastest ever. What power there. Gravity. Dan Tonkir. High hopes. Tossed even higher. And then the mighty four. record all over in six seconds. Dan Tomkia cannot defy gravity. Gravity go marching on. Hey. The wife's here, here. Yeah, she's a nerd. <laughs> Can't be put in front of the wife. All those hours spent in the shed. Mm. Six seconds. It was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> so you were going in for a flip first, I suppose. It was just like, who got the first flip, won the battle. Is that the way it yeah. worked out? Yeah, I was, I was trying to come round um, to the side and get around, because I can out, out... Well, I can out-drive them, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they turned on me, and I had to go wider and wider and wider to get around them, uh, and it didn't work. Oh, uh, back to the drawing board, or what? No, loads drive a bit better. Loads to drive a bit better? Yeah. Listen, guys. What can I say? Commiserations. Thank you. A brilliant team, a brilliant robot. The kids should still be proud, and the missus. Let's hear it for Dan Tomkia! Well, you got rid of the fifth seed. I know. Talk, talk me through it. Um, well, they were the dangerous robot out there. And like he said, they were trying to drive around me, and I just got, got in there and uh, got their side. Everyone's scared of you now. I mean, everyone's talking in the pits about you being such a powerful robot. Um, is there anyone that scares you? Uh, well, it's out now, so... Uh... <laughs> that was the robot that you were most afraid of? Yeah. So that was like your little mini-final, really? Yeah, it looks like it. it. Has the best driver, has the best weapon, so... Yeah. What about the likes of Exterminator and Tornado? 
I can get under it, so you that will be over. Well, guys, everyone's scared. I think you can go all the way. The smart money's on you. Let's hear it for gravity! <laughs> already through to the second round of this semi-final Tornado and Gravity in a few minutes Bulldog Breed against Tough as Nails another brilliant Dutch entry but now Exterminator and St Agro let's see how they got this far well St Agro looked very impressive in their heat beating Scrap to Saw then they met Ciros in the heat final Exterminator Past Major Tom, three and Tsunami and Diabolos, and then Killer Carrot two before fighting Tsunami again in the heat final. From St Agnes in Cornwall, St Agro. Named after that patron saint of Roboteers. Now, Michael, you are driving. Have you seen your opposition in action? Yeah, exterminator. Tough robot. Rip the opponents to shreds. Hope it doesn't happen to us. But you are a double-sided flipper. You're the yeah. only one in the wars, I believe. I reckon we can get them. You reckon you can get them? Yeah. What's your tactics going to be? Kill them. Absolutely kill them. Have you talked to your talk tactics before the match? Yes, we do. And what, what's been the major sort of, like... The way you're going to go on this one? Well, the major thing, thing with us is we've only got a limited amount of flips. We have to conserve them carefully. Otherwise, we're going to end up at, at the end running around trying to escape from a, a spinner that's spinning and going to kill us. It's the lighter, but the faster of the two. The flipper can work both ways up, but it's prone to failure, and that's not much good when it takes up 40% of your robot. From Belmont in Herefordshire and number 11 seed, Exterminate. In their fifth Robot Wars and their second semi-final. Now, I just want to know, I want you to paint a picture for the viewers at home. What does it actually feel like? Are you nervous? Are you frightened? It's very, very nervous until they say activate and then you just forget about everything and just concentrate on what you're doing. You're up against a flipper. Yeah, another flipper. How are you going to deal with it? Well, hopefully we're going to remove its wheels off the side of it um, before it gets a chance to flip us. Um, that's our only tactic, I think. Has the vertical spinning disc, four-wheel driven, four-wheel steer, extremely destructive, but it doesn't like flippers. Firestorm, for example, beat it in the heat final of the Sixth Wars. Roboteers, stand by. The St. Agro team, Terry and Benjamin Carlin, who's 12, and Michael Gambon. And exterminator Marlon Pritchard and Simon Baldwin. And in the arena for the house robot, shunt once more. And Matilda with the tusks and the flywheel and the attitude problem. Three. And the bad breath. Two. One. Activate. And the mother. Well, we don't talk about her. Sinagro. Quickly across the Reno floor. Exterminator awaits. Is the spinning blade of exterminator working? The ref cam looking on. Spinning so fast, it's a blur, the exterminator blade, I think. Straight into the side of St. Agro. And St. Agro already tattered here. There's a chunk out of one of the wheels. Look. Oh! Flayed. There's the chunk from the wheel. They won't be able to run truly across the arena floor. They're limping towards the pit release. They can't even activate that properly. Exterminator gave them a help. We are now down to the stage where the fittest and meanest survives and the weakest are marmalised. Oh dear, can hardly look on Terry Carlin. He's the builder and the fixer of the team. And the taxi service too, he says, to and from the workshop and also the robot hospital. Because that, I'm afraid, is where St Agro is heading. Refbot has a look. The inevitable is nigh. And Exterminator looks mighty and powerful and durable. Persistent. And Matilda, of course, always likes to come in and pulverize the weak. Whoa! Look at that, missing out of that wheel. You're not talking foam rubber out there. That was real metal munching. Down comes Shunt's axe. It's an aggro venting steam. In the CPZ. 
Ooh, they grimace. And they stare. And they ponder how much damage they can cause. Exterminator. Marlon Pritchard, the driver. Simon Baldwin, tactical expert. A suspension technician by trade. Marlon is an instrument engineer. And uh, Terry and the team look on in dismay. It'll hobble its way, assisted by Matilda, onto the floor flipper. And St Agro's last memories of this, the Robot Wars, the Seventh Wars semi-final. Will be a thrust through the air. And down they came with the greatest of ease and Matilda in there once again I like the look of Exterminator we've seen some very good machines so far in the semi-final Gravity and Tornado and now Exterminator St. Agrog consigned to the pit of oblivion Exterminator they go through Looking short. We ran, out, we ran out of luck. Yeah, we ran out of luck. You had the same problem in the heats, didn't you, with that wheel? Yeah. Matilda took it apart in the heats, took it apart here. Yeah. Just talk me through the fight from your angle. Couldn't get under them, they took us apart. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wrecked you, really. Yeah. And then you got flipped and pitted. What was your tactic? How did you think you were going to take them on? We thought we could get under them and just try and get them quick before their spinner spun up, but couldn't get under them, so. Yeah. The rest of it was just downhill from there, really. Yeah. Ends in tears. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> so St. Agro, where's he going? Going to rebuild it, yeah. get it lower to the ground, more powerful flipper, come back next year. All right, guys, good to have you here. Let's hear it for St. Agro! <laughs> My memory serves me right, you've been in the semi-finals once before. Yeah, Series 4. Was that the fourth war, was it? Yeah. Uh, so these aren't quite heady heights, you're used to it. How do you think it went? Yeah, it went well. That's, that's what we hope and try and do. Try and get to the wheels before they got the flipper under us. Yeah. Because we're not good for a flipper. If we go over, we've had it. Yeah. So. Can you not self right? We can if you land in the sort of right place, but yeah. it's always hit and miss. You get on the side of the arena or something. So we had to try and take him in a bit first. Yeah, and you did. So anyway, let's hope you avoid a flipper. Yeah. Get who you want. Let's hope you go all the way. Yeah. Let's hear it. Exterminator! <laughs> the break for more hot robo action here on Robot Wars. Coming up our last round one battle in this semi-final. The best of British Bulldog breed against the toughest of the Dutch, tough as nails. A full pressure flipper against the mighty powerful crusher. the first of the semi-finals still alive tornado the reigning champions gravity from holland and from the last battle we saw exterminator joining a very very powerful bunch they'll take some stopping welcome back to robot wars and the first of our series semi-finals tonight we're looking for two robots to go through to the grand final Will it be one of our next two robots? Only the war zone will decide. Once again then, Greg, Tornado, Gravity and Exterminator through already. Next up, Tough as Nails and Bulldog Breed. Now the number 12 seeds, one Heat K, beating hard and then Cat 3 in a tense and tough Heat final. Joining them at this stage, Newcomers to the UK wars, previously seen in Holland, watch for them, tough as nails. From Cannock in Staffordshire, and number 12 seed, Bulldog Breed. They've reached previous heat finals, this is their first semi-final though. Semi-finals, lads. Semi-finals this is, we've never got this far before. How are we feeling? 
Yeah, we're confident. Uh, it's the robot that's a little bit poorly at the moment, so I think we need the vet. What's wrong with him? It's got a fractured chassis and a twisted frame. We've got one wheel on the floor, one hard point on the floor, and trying to keep it straight is a major problem. But we need a vet. We need a vet. Vet in the house! <laughs> Two hopes, Bob Hope and no hope. Bulldog Bree with a top speed of 10 miles an hour, slower, heavier. Weakness is absolutely none. We've just heard about 100. From Haren in the Netherlands, top as names. With the trophy of Robo Chicken on board, previously beaten in this series. How are we feeling? Fine. <laughs> We had some trouble with the robot, but uh, we, we uh, were able to re repair everything, so we're ready for it. So. What, is, what was wrong with your robot? The uh, antenna sheared off and uh, we had the uh, broken speed control. Yeah, we saw that in the last fight. Yeah. It, it was a very close one. Niels, yeah. what's your tactics for the semi-final? Uh, probably still the same. Uh, grab one to the uh, border breed and drop in the pit again. See what works this time. Demands respect this. It won a major robot event in Holland with that hugely powerful crusher, but there is a limited CO2 supply and electrical problems on board. Roboteers, stand by. The Bulldog Breed, the Summerfield family. And Jeroen, Stefan and Nielsen, toughish nails. And Sergeant Bash. And Matilda too. I won't be able to visit Holland in a long time. Three, two, one, activate. Never mind. Tough as nails, up and over Bulldog Breed. Bouncing down. Somewhere underneath is that Robo Chicken trophy. Is invertible, of course, tough as nails. And if Bulldog Breed gets caught in the pincers, they will be in major peril. They snap the pincers together to the crusher. You heard the snap, but Bulldog Breed survived. And at the moment, those problems. Tony Somerville was telling us about in the pits don't seem that evident. Robert Summerfield, 17 at the controls. Can they keep the machine straight? Straight enough. They're doing very well here, Bulldog Breed, because the way tough as nails fought earlier in the competition, I had them down as a dead set winner of this. And Bulldog Breed flips them, and tough as nails is in trouble. And the best of British here is flying the Union Jack high and proud. Tuffers Nails bounces down, they cannot get Bulldog Breed in their grips, and this is brilliant stuff from the Bulldog. They are growling out there and prowling, and now they're caught by Tuffers Nails. This is the closest battle we've seen in the semi-final so far. Tuffers Nails couldn't get traction, and Bulldog Breed get away. There's the pit yawning, Tuffers Nails tries the big heave-ho, and Bulldog Breed digs in, resilient as ever. Tuffers Nails, the cross arena drive. Bulldog Breed off the arena sidewall and shoves back. This is a terrific tug of war out there now. Sergeant Bash has a look. Was there a flick of flame? They lock horns. What a wonderful battle. Bulldog Breed, the concentration etched on the face of Tony Summerfield, an engineer by trade. Over the flame pit to and fro, is that causing damage? to the two one-horsepower motors inside Bulldog Breed, I wonder. Is the energy dissipating in their full-pressure flipper? Is tough as nails, a one-trick pony. Their tyre is chattered. Bulldog Breed comes in once again and tries to flip them out. Sergeant Bash is ready. For me, Bulldog Breed has been the worthier of the two here. And that is surprising. Heat finalists in the fourth wars, the fifth wars, tag team terror champions in Robo Wars Extreme in the past. Bulldog Breed holding on. The push by Tough as Nails. They can't get them in the pit. That is Bulldog bravery for you. Now they try to get in underneath the ground clearance of Tough as Nails. Three centimeters that ground clearance. And in Robot Wars terms, that is yawning. This is going to go to the judges. And they will mark on star control, damage and aggression. And I think we may well have a surprise here. Cease. Bulldog Breed seeded. But I'd have had Tough as Nails before we had Activate. I'm not sure now. Brilliant stuff. Terrific fight. Tension.
What a ding-dong battle that was. We're going to have to go to the judges. You know the criteria. Well, they're making up the minds. Let's review the highlights of that fantastic battle. One of the best we've ever seen in Robot Wars. Tough as nails, immediately on the attack. But Bulldog Breed too sharp, too wily, too stylish. Certainly tough as nails, aggressive and pirouetting there. But Bulldog Breed full of aggression too. Who's scoring the most points? Down on your score sheet. Tough as nails for that attack. Bulldog Breed for hanging on and then fighting back. To and fro. Well, the judges have made their decision. They've gone for Bulldog Breed! Um, you were nearly out of the arena twice. Um, I think that's probably what swung it. I think that is, yeah. Your tackle, of course, open the pit and try and push them in. Yeah, we tried, but we couldn't get them in. You couldn't get them in. Why, why couldn't you get them in the pit? You seemed like you had more power than them. Uh, that's true, but they have very good traction and uh, we ran out of battery power. So, yeah. again. Well, you've done well though, haven't you? Got... It was a great fight. We really enjoyed it and uh, it was very difficult. Uh, we didn't know uh, who won. It was, uh, for right. us, it uh, is too close to call. But... Uh, yeah, it wasn't close. Um, I couldn't pick the bones yeah. out of it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Tough as Nails. Tough as nails, but they're not tougher than Bulldog Breed, are they? No, they're not. Uh, I think the phrase all through this competition has been uh, skin of teeth. We're, we're driving with a broken chassis and a twisted frame. We've got one wheel just on the floor and another one just off the floor. Were you disappointed that you didn't yeah. get them out the arena? Yeah. Say so again? They're such big wheels, they just they keep riding off the wall all the time. Yeah. Got there. Because like, we've got to, towards the end there. But it looked like they were going to push you into that pit. That's what we thought. As soon as they started pushing, we thought we'll start pulling, which will offset them. And we'd, as soon as they felt us pull, we changed direction again. Yeah. That threw them a little bit, I thought. Yeah. And I saw Matilda turn around, I thought, right, <laughs> you're going that way. Yeah. And uh, we started to lose battery power because they're such a bloody good pushers. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was a, a fair contest, and it wouldn't have been a tall problem to, to lose to these guys. Well, that's very good of you, sir. But you didn't, you nope. threw. You're marching on, yep. and I reckon you're going to bite a few more robots before the end of this competition. Yeah, Bulldog's moving on. Not fair. Okay, Bulldog Breed, let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen! Still surviving, Tornado, Gravity, Exterminator and Bulldog Breed. This is how they line up in the second round of this, the first semi-final. Bulldog Breed will fight Exterminator, Gravity will fight Tornado. Da, 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 da. Gravity. Very good flipper. Very, very, very good flipper. They got Dan Tomkia out. Yeah, they'll probably do the same to us. You are the number one seed, though. You've got a lot of power, you've got a lot of experience, and you've got an amazing machine. Why do you think you're not going to win uh, this? Well, but part of it, we fought Dan Tomkey a lot of times. They, uh, Dan Tomkey frequently gets under the front of us, and they just went on straight under the front of Dan Tomkey. <laughs> he's just got the smile from here to ear. He's been walking around, checking them out, haven't you? Yeah. What do you think? Well, they're really low on the front side, so I think I won't get them on the front side. It's as simple as that. You've got to take them from behind. Something like that, behind or the side, doesn't matter. And they are fitting weapons as we speak. Do they have weapons? They do, they have uh, They have certain weapons. You call that weapons? Oh, fighting talk from one of the bad boys! So, four robots left. They'll be split into two fights. The winners of each going through to the grand final. It's time. In fact, it's time to show no mercy. Tornado. So much experience. This is third series semi-finals. David Gamble, Andrew Marshall, Brian Moss. Gravity. Newcomers, but mighty thus far. WJ Dijkstra, Alex Charon. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots, Cassius Chrome, a newcomer to this series, and Sir Killalot, an old Three, favourite. Two. The durable and experienced against the powerful, but perhaps the raw. 
That's how I'd see this one. And Tornado has the front bulldozer scoop on. The interchangeable weaponry to get in underneath gravity. Gravity's ground clearance very low at the front because of the flipper blade, but at the side, you'll see a chasm yawning wide open. Tornado trying to exploit that into the clutches of Sakinalon in that CPZ. And Tornado were the more experienced than those early encounters and gravity just away from Sir Killalot. Oh, but damage, hobbling, hobbling. One tire puncture, you can see there, there's a puncture. Tornado, look at the way Tornado spins, almost on a sixpence. That'll open me up to emails. A sixpence, oh, ask your granddad. Tornado, attacking gravity on the angle grinder. And gravity in peril, I think, for the first time in the championships. Was it Sir Killalot that punctured the tyre? We may find out later. Tornado gives chase. So quick across the arena floor. So versatile, but flipped away. One mistake there by Andrew Marchant driving, and it could have been so costly. And there is still life in gravity as it bubbles along on the arena floor. Tornado to the side, and now we'll push. Is it a massive power when it pushes, and gravity flips itself away for a moment. Gains some breathing space. Back comes Tornado. It is a darn dogged thing. And it chases once again, and it's, I think, pressed the pit release, and gravity on the pit, and caught there. And descending away from the Seventh Wars. What a fight. What a closely contested battle. Gravity can't defy gravity in the end. Tornado, the champions, the first seeds, they go through to the grand final. said to you unlucky and you said not unlucky. No, just uh, they punctured our tyres, that was it. We could move around but not at our normal speed. I know, you, I know both tyres were flat, weren't they? Yeah. Um, it is a great driver, but I don't think it's ever been flipped that high before. <laughs> I don't Get know. you in by the arena wall. Um, disappointed? No, just a bit. I mean, but you got the fair seeds, you must have thought, oh. No, actually, I was quite happy with them. Yeah, you wanted to fight them, did you? Yeah. Yeah, did you think you had the makings, the takings of them? Um, well, when they got upside down, uh, they were at a disadvantage because uh, they couldn't push me anymore because they were just sliding up on top of me. Yeah, and then also they had that lip so you could get under and flip. Yeah. But you, you, you couldn't... I couldn't push them to the edge anymore, so... Uh... Yeah, didn't you see the pig coming? <laughs> I couldn't get off with flat tires. Oh, you couldn't get <laughs> off, you were just stuck there. Yeah. Next time you come back, new robot, or are you going to stick with gravity? Oh, I build a new robot every year. You build a new robot every year, yeah. just like that. How much does a robot like that cost? Um, about 4,000 euros, that's 3,000 pounds. Well, can't wait to see what you come up with next, because gravity was a, an amazing robot, so watch this space. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for gravity! That was one we were really afraid of. They've been flipping things out of the arena. Well, you saw Dan Tompkins, six seconds. I know. And, They're amazing. And I saw how high it got you. Yeah, got you we were high. flying. Um, but you, you got through again, you're relentless. It's <laughs> by the it's, skin it's of like our a teeth. Now. <laughs> it's a battering ram. And yeah. then the driving was excellent. Did you know they couldn't get off the pit when you opened the button? I sort of realised if I can position them over the pit, if it goes down quickly enough, mm. they won't get off. And I was lucky. Well, good luck in the grand final. Thank you. The fair seeds, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it, Team Tornado! Well, join me after the break. Will Exterminator or Bulldog Breed join Tornado in the grand final? Keep it here, keep it Robot Wars. So the reigning champs through. Which of these two will join them? Exterminator with the blade or Bulldog Breed with the flipper? Exterminator with the power, Bulldog Breed with the pace. It's going to be close. It's going to be mayhem. It's Robot Wars.
Welcome back, Exterminator and Bulldog Breed to come, but this is how Tornado, the reigning champions, reached their second successive UK final. All push, and when it came to shove, gravity, not good enough. Welcome back to Robot Wars and the first of our series semi-finals. Before the break, another robot won their place in the grand final. But who's going to join them? Well, let's see who's left. Tornado's job is done tonight, but plenty of slog ahead for Exterminator and Bulldog Breed. So the Bulldog fights on then? Yes, it does. Uh, this is serious now. We've pushed our look as far as it'll go. We just hope it lasts just one more. And we'll, fingers crossed, we'll come out in one piece. Well, you're up against Exterminator. Yeah. It's a bit of a nasty machine out there. Yeah, but you can only be nasty if you're in the arena. This round, Bulldog Breed, are you going to take him? It's going to be very tough. Very tough. Why? It's built like a tank. It is very strong. Very strong. All over. There's just no way of getting into it, I think. So it's going to be quite a close contest. It's going to be real close. It's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a good battle, but he never gives up that bulldog. No, nor do we. Bulldog breed. Showing terrific doggedness to get this far, the machine of the Summerfield family. There's young Robert in the middle, only 17. Exterminator. It's the second series semi-final. Wild Thing beat it back in Robot Wars, the fourth wars. Marlon Pritchard and Simon Baldwin. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots, Cassius Crone. It's a killer lot too. Three, two, one. Activate. Bulldog Breed, slightly the heavier by a couple of kilos, slightly the faster by one mile an hour. Exterminator's blade, though, certainly the more damaging. Already rendering metal there. Bending and buckling and shredding and tearing. And Bulldog Breed upended. Flipped over, can self right using the flipper. And once again, hopping away. Oh, but they know. Look at the faces. Look at the faces, they know. Tony Summerfield desperately trying to drive Bulldog Breed away from the trouble zone. An exterminator after them, and to kill a lot, that hardly helps. Exterminator's blade back up to full speed. Only checked when it comes into contact with Bulldog Breed's armour. Into the CPZ. How can Bulldog Breed turn this fight around? It is difficult to see here a way out for them, because... They can't flip, can they? They can't get in underneath Exterminator because their front is buckled up. Exterminator pushes into the clutches of Sir Killalot in that CPZ. Oh, Sir Killalot almost tried to lance on Exterminator, but clutches Bulldog Breed. Blocks it up. The ref bot looking on. Exterminator moves away, knowing, I think, theirs is a place in the grand final. Moments away, surely now, for the team from Herefordshire. Exterminator. In again on Bulldog Breed. Well, they've done terrifically well to get this far. But they will get no further, unless there is a major turnaround. I mean, we have seen robots at this stage. This dominant drive themselves into the pit, get too close to an arena side wall, and then a flipper has tossed them out. That's happened in the past in Robot Wars, but not this side. Not this side. Bulldog Breed. For a minute there, I thought your kennel awaited. Down and away out of that arena. Sir Killalot comes in. Never misses a chance. Well, give a dog a bone. You know the story. Exterminator again. And a bit of metal is ripped away from Bulldog Breed. Sir Killalot crumples. Exterminator thrashes. Tony Summerfield and Robert Summerfield look on. They can barely watch. Oh. There's a tattered noise to it all. The tyre exposed. Oh. They're beaten. Is he saying stop it? Is he saying Refbot come in? So much work goes into these machines. They've gone so far. And one step away from the grand final. 
Bulldog Breed has been put back on its lead and it will go back to the kennels. A whimpering, not barking. Exterminator the winners and through to the grand final for Marlon Pritchard and Simon Baldwin. Well done to them. Annihilation, obliteration, devastation in the war zone. The Bulldog gets put down, exterminated through to the grand final. didn't go to plan. Um, that was the plan we were going to fool them by rushing into their weapon. <laughs> it's got to come to an end sometime, hasn't it? You are all over the war zone. There's bits of robot everywhere. Well, we said we'd like to be around a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> didn't quite mean like that. Um, you couldn't seem to flip them. Couldn't get under. We, tried, we, we could see how low they were to the floor at the front. And every time we tried to get to the side, they turned, so I thought, oh, let's go for it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, well, once it had hit you, Flip it a few times, it started bending up, and then you had no chance of getting up underneath. That's right, that's six mil thick titanium, that is. That yeah. gives you an idea of the power in their weapon. <laughs> Have so. you ever taken a worse battering than that in Robot Wars? I think Hypnid is set a go or two, but uh, no, that's probably the worst one, yeah. It's probably the worst one. Yeah. So go ballistic for Bulldog Breed 3! <laughs> I should stand that close to you, actually. Uh, You've got a definite mean streak. <laughs> now, you know, we do like carnage and chaos. We, we like destruction. But um, you showed absolutely no mercy whatsoever. You can't, you can't. Is there any way? Potter? Because, like, his flipper was still going, and there's any chance we could have got on it, we could have been over and out straight away. Well, it's still flipping. You just can't take the chance. So you've just got to go in and really kill it off. You've got to give it a good kick in. Even when there was bits north, south, east, and west of that robot. <laughs> That's what we're here for. You finally built a robot that can do the damage, <laughs> that does the business, and we love it. Ladies and gentlemen, go mad! Exterminator! Exterminator has silenced Bulldog Breeds Roars and they've made the grand final on Robot Wars. Bye bye. Coming up next time, the second of our semi finals featuring the second seeds Firestorm 5, the 14th seeds Thermidor, the 16th seeds Storm 2. Prepare to jump upside down in delight as the Chase Australia lands on Challenge this Monday at 9. On pick next, the SG1 team undergo a startling transformation. Welcome to the second semi-final. Already through to the grand final, the might and muscle drive and determination for a tight tussle. The cutting blade of Exterminator! Exterminator! Joining them, the reigning champions, Tornado, with a similarly relentless style, all push and shove, durable and powerful. Team Tornado! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the master of mayhem, Craig Charles. Yes, tonight our second eight heat winners return for the last of our semi-finals. These are battle-hardened warriors with fame just around the corner. But fame costs, my friends, and here's where they start paying in blood sweat and some oil. Our robots face a gruelling knockout competition, but in the end, only two can return for our grand final, Robot Wars, the Armageddon. So, let the semi-finals begin. Coming up, four terrific tussles, M2 and Atomic, Typhoon 2 and Thermidor 2, 
Storm 2 and the Grim Reaper. First up though, Mute, winners of Heat L. As they destroyed Judge Shred with a hop or two along the way. And now fight Firestorm 5, who knock Bam Bam out, Reptiran out, and then Ripper in the Heat P final. From Langley Moore in County Durham and number two seed, Firestorm 5. Third in the fifth wars, third in the sixth wars. Can they go one better? Second seed are here. You've yep. got through. Yep. You are up against another flipper. Yep. Mute. Mute. It's flipping hell out there. Do you like that one? Oh, it's got that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, what are your tactics going to be? Just go for them again. Just go straight in. Uh, I don't think they've actually managed to get under anyone so far. So I think they've been flipping people with the, the, the back flip that they've got. So uh, we'll just see how it goes. Good luck out there, you two. Thank you. A two-wheel drive wedge-shaped flipper at 94 kilos, fast manoeuvrable, but it is only two-wheel drive. From Stoke-on-Trent in Staffordshire, Mute. Came to the fore in the Robot Wars New Blood Championship. Mute, semi-finals, how are you feeling? At last, we've got through to somewhere that's made us recognised now as a fully fledged robot here and the robot's now going to be seeded. That's correct. The robot will be stopped in the street and asked for autographs, as will you three. You are now fighting Firestorm, they are the number two seed. This is going to be a tough one, so we're going to give it our best shot and just hope that everything stops intact because two flippers again against each other, it's going to be frenzied. Full pressure CO2 flippers on this wedge-shaped robot at the front and at the rear. High velocity, extreme composite armour, four kilos of CO2 on board. Roboteers, stand by. To look at the teams then, Adam Emmett, Daniel Emmett and Jeremy Honkock. a mute. And there's Graham Bone and Hazel Heslop, recently engaged. There's Matilda. Ooh. And also in the arena for the house robots, Sergeant Bash. Three, two, one, two, eight. Firestorm five in underneath Mute. Mute with 0 0.6 centimeters of ground clearance. 96 kilos is the heavier, would you believe it? Firestorm five relentless, pressurizing. Mute hopping away. Expending CO2 all the while here. A little bit of an experience showing perhaps. Oh, it looks dramatic. It looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, Fred Astaire will be proud. But Fred Astaire will be beaten by Firestorm 5, I would guess. And Firestorm 5 away and across the arena floor. And I think Mute was knocked into unconsciousness, but it's knocked out of the arena anyway. An experience show for me. Cease. Too tight to the arena sidewall. They daren't try and self-right, not from there, they'd have hopped out themselves and Firestorm, the coup de grace. Measuring, clinical, and there's the kill. Well, mute self-writer is all wrong. Firestorm, they go burn! they're going to do to your robot. Come here, come here. Look what they've got to do. How did your robot get that far out of the arena? Uh, press the flipper release button and it kind of fired itself out. So you flipped off the back of them then? Yes. Because you had that awkward dilemma there. You were there and if you if, if you self-righted, you were going to hurdle the, uh, the barrier, weren't you? It's a bit, save a bit of face, I think, throwing ourselves out. <laughs> Kamikaze. Kamikaze, Harry Carey. <laughs> Listen, um, when you've got a self-writer that yeah. can't get you back on your wheels, it does eventually. it's not a self-writer, is it? Yeah, it, does, it does look good, though. <laughs> it, it, it looks brilliant, <laughs> yeah. I mean, doing somersaults. Not much but use, but... It's not going to win your battles. No. And when you're up against the second seeds... Mm, yeah. When we came down that once, we seemed to put a couple of scrapes on. 
yeah. Firestone 5. So, so you, you're hoping for a damage thing where from the oh, judges. Really. <laughs> Forks down into them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, the great robots here as they are mute. Yeah. Not mute, but they can't off talk. <laughs> um, Easy peasy. I was worried going into it though. Was it? Yeah. I mean, the same the way the, the flipper works. If they had been slightly lower on the ground, yeah. then we would have been probably out the arena. Because it is powerful, it's isn't it? Very powerful. But yeah. they couldn't get underneath yet. No, we just had that, that edge. We've got the, re the move, removal strip on the front, so yeah. if we take damage, we can change the strip. So we really, really low. Second seed. Mm. Pressure's on. It is. There's not many seeds left. They, you they, always they, get they, through to the finals. You to. always get to the finals. To. So, um, are you going to make it this time? I'll give it a good shot. All right. Hope you look holes out. Anyway, let's hear it. Firestorm! <laughs> Join me after the break for some down and dirty destructive devastation when Robot Wars semi finals continues. Coming up after the break, unsung thus far, but watch out for Typhoon 2 against Thermidor. Typhoon, one of the best I've seen so far. Ooh, watch out for the Grim Reaper 2 against Storm 2. Welcome back to the second semi-final of the Seventh Wars. Flipping fantastic stuff so far from the number two seeds, Firestorm 5, who survive. Mute streams. Over. Welcome back to Robot Wars and the last of our series semi-finals. Eight Heat winners are fighting head-to-head -to, -head to go through to the next round. So, let's see who's up next. The number 14 seeds, Thermidor 2, Craig. They played cat and mouse with Mighty Mouse. But the lobster claws took the applause. And they'll meet Typhoon 2, my dark horses for this whole championship in their heat final. They beat Iron Ore, and they told us they weren't even at their best then. From Norwich, in Norfolk, and number 14 seed, Thermidor 2. Their fifth wars, their second semi-finals. How are you feeling? A little bit nervous, but we're, we're good. You are up against Typhoon. That's the little bit nervous bit. <laughs> They're a pretty mighty machine. Have you seen them in action? Um, we've heard bad things. I haven't actually seen them yet. They're pretty powerful, and they ripped iron ore to shreds. I in the know. Last well, absolutely took it apart. How are you going to defend against that? We were just going to try and get in quick, and hopefully flip them over before they have a chance to get their weapon up to speed. Improved from the sixth wars with more flipper power, has 15 mile an hour top speeds. A limited gas supply, though, is a major problem. From Edinburgh in Scotland. Typhoon 2. The heavyweight daddy of a previous lightweight and middleweight champion machine. You absolutely tore Iron Art to shreds in that last bout. You have been a massive hit with the fans. Tell me a little bit about the machine. How do you manage to do that? Um, well, inside the robot, we have four wheels which are independently driven by four motors. And they are then split into two subsystems inside the robot. So if we lose half the drive inside the robot, we can continue on battling. That is very clever. That's nicely thought out. And I believe it's, it's designed like an aircraft or something, squadron leader was saying. Yes, um, that's the same principle which is in most modern aircraft. Wow. So what's going to be your tactics in this one? You are up against Thermidor, the lobster. Well, our strategy is to immobilize our opponents using our disc, but however our tactics, I'm sorry, I can't tell you there. Military secret, of course, I keep forgetting. On the outside of that rotating disc, four claw hammer cutters, absolutely devastating when it gets up to full speed, but at low speed, it is unstable and can topple. Roboteers, stand by. To the teams then, first of all, Thermidor 2, Dave Harding and Ian Harvey there on the left, and the boys from the Edinburgh Air Cadets, Corporal Gary Cairn, Sergeant Graham Horn and Flying Officer Peter Bennett, and Sir Killalots in the arena. 
and alongside our Knight of the Robot Wars realm is a commoner chant by the name. Three, two, one, activate. Typhoon getting up to speed, whirring, buzzing. Can Thermidor 2 keep up with them at 15 mile an hour top speed? You can feel the effect of Typhoon's 2 slam from up here. And I think that has done for Thermidor 2. That is immensely powerful. This spinning, whirling dervish of a robot. One slam on Thermidor 2. And it knocked it out. It was as simple as that. Flying Officer Bennett looks on. A business development director for Euro Radar. And I think Thermidor 2 is about to go off the Robot Wars, Seventh Wars. Radar chart, don't you? Oh dear, punctured by shunt. How much work has gone into this? How many hours? How many hopes as they fought through their heats in terrific style yet again? They reached the semi-finals of the Fourth Wars. They were beaten by Pussycat there. And now the Lobster has fallen foul of the flying phantom that is Typhoon 2. Thermidor 2 out. Typhoon 2 through its first fight. This the semi-final stage. Ooh, they look on. As their machine is about to meet a grisly end. One day Sir Killalot will just drop a beaten robot out of the arena. But here... Mm. Broad lobster. Oh. Shunt. <laughs> oh, they crawl. It's not over yet. We've cooked it. And now we want to make some lobster soup, perhaps. First, to do that, take a lobster, put it on the floor flipper, and um, let it fly for a while. Cool off through the arena night air. Mmm. He's almost licking his lips there, Ian Harvey. Lobster off the menu of Robot Wars for now. And then once you've tenderised the lobster a bit, you need to mash it up. The ref bot adjusts, positions. The timing has to be right, of course, in any good piece of cookery. Oh! We'll leave you to do the washing up. Spinning speed correct. Down it came. Well, another seeded robot is spat out of the competition. Thermidor, they go out. Typhoon 2 goes storming on. Now before you start crying, there's a no mercy rule, you know that. Oh, yeah, we know. And the house robots didn't show you any mercy whatsoever. No, no. <laughs> they did, actually, because they could have gone in for the kill and uh, obliterated you, didn't they? They did. They backed off, I think. They felt sorry for us. To talk me through it, it was just the first hit. It's not going to take long, is it? It was. <laughs> <laughs> they managed to... Our only chance was really to get them before they span up. We, they got away. They uh, ran away, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, we, we, we thought we could slow them down enough, but whatever they hit, it knocked something out. Never mind, guys. Disappointed? Bit, yeah. Yeah. A lot of work's gone into that robot. A lot yeah. of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money. Yeah, we'll repair it. All right, then. <laughs> Look after yourselves. Come back again. Let's hear it for Thermidor 2! <laughs> a nasty streak, you, haven't you? Yeah. Hey. And I'll tell you what, girls are... Well, they're a sucker for a boy in uniform, aren't they? Have you seen all your groupies down there? Robo groupies in uniform. <laughs> Talk me through it. Um. Well, our tactic, as ever, was to avoid them, stop them flipping us till we could spin up to a decent speed yeah. and then just knock them about. Well, you did spin up to a decent speed. Was that full speed or were you sort of... Was there's more in the tank? There's more. 
When are you going to open it up, crank it up, and let us see what it really can do? Um, the thing is, is that it takes a long time to spin up, but we may in the final if we get there. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you feeling a bit confident then? We may in the final. <laughs> All right, guys. Good luck. This is Typhoon 2! Well, they've come in force to support Typhoon 2. They're through, along with Firestorm. Next up, Storm 2 and the Grim Reaper. Let's see how they got this far. Storm 2 battled hard against Steel Avenger and thrust it away to reach the series semi-final. Great driving potential. And this will raise a few questions in this semi. They're fighting the Grim Reaper. Who got beyond Big Nipper to the rhythm of the house robots. Surviving a scare or two. But helped out by the ghastly shadow. From Ipswich in Suffolk and the number 16 seed, Storm 2. Seeded after being crowned new blood champions. Do you reckon you take Grim Reaper? Yeah, it's been it's performing well so far. We've, we've not had to do any maintenance on it really between fights at all, other than just checking it over. We put the skirts on. And what do your skirts do then? The skirts are, are spring loaded and they stop Grim Reaper getting under the sides of us. So um, they, they run absolutely flush to the ground. has 18 horsepower on the drive. That's a higher force than Tornado. 23 mile an hour top speeds, twice as fast as the Grim Reaper. From Bognor Regis in West Sussex, the Grim Reaper. All about the CO2 flipper here. Semi-final, semi-final. How are you feeling? Confident. Confident you are up against Storm 2. Yep. They are the 16th seed, they're a pretty powerful machine. Very powerful machine, uh, slippable. Once we, once we flip it over, then uh, obviously their scoop runs the other way, which means it should drive up the robot, and then we can flip them out. They've got skirts on, though. I know, They've the girls. Got skirts on. The girls. Uh, insults. This can flip 100 kilos, mind you. Compact, strong, very quick. 24 volts, 750 watt energy. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the two teams then. Storm 2 first, Ed Hoppit, Tim Bentz and Meryl Kolak. And there's the Grim Reaper boys, Simon and Gary Smith and young Charlie Smith too. <laughs> and there's their omnipresent shadow and Sergeant Bash will shadow them in the arena and shunt two. Three, two, one, activate. We've heard the insults fly, now will the sparks fly. Storm 2, look at that with the shove, 100 kilos behind it. One kilo heavier than the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper's ground clearance exposed only 0 0.6 of a centimetre, but Storm 2 has found its way through and will lever in underneath the Grim Reaper, and Grim Reaper's away. 12 miles an hour, can't dodge Storm 2 across the arena. Storm 2 is by far the faster. And to me, is on top here. Goodness, we're going to have a strong lineup in the final of Robot Wars. The seventh was Storm 2 pressurizing. You can't outrun the Reaper, says the logo on the side of the green machine. And Storm 2 is furious. Storm 2 underneath again and drives on. The pit release activated. The Grim Reaper is scuttling. The pit is descending. Pushing again. The Grim Reaper simply cannot get its flipper to make any sort of definitive contact on Storm 2 because Storm 2 has the side skirt and the pace. Oh, look at the power behind that. It's ripped away one of the panels of the angle grinders at the side of the arena. I think the Grim Reaper is doing splendidly just to hold on here. Oh, until Sergeant Bash starts to crumple. One of the side panels nearly ripped away. They're still motoring and manoeuvring the Grim Reaper. This 
is not over yet. Ooh, I thought it might be there. The pit was yawning. Storm two by far the more aggressive. It's dramatic stuff, isn't it? The Grim Reaper needs to get away from there. For a moment, I thought Ford Control had gone and they were stuck in reverse. They weren't, they're out. They're piggybacking. I'd stay up there if I were you. Storm two can't do any damage here if you're there, or can they? Carry you to the side of wall and then they flip you out at in Robot Wars. Something's come off. May have come off shunt, actually. I think it is. Oh, it's his exhaust. It's come away. The shunt without the exhaust pipe is uh, rather a horrible thought. Down comes its axe. The Grim Reaper is upended, has come down. How many more flips and south rights can it perform, though? I won. It's going to go to the judges, and this has been a terrific tussle. Storm 2 trying to finish it there and then, and spinning away. The Grim Reaper on the flame pit. The judges will decide on style control, damage and aggression. Standing ovation, richly deserved. Two fine teams, Storm and the Grim Reaper. What a right royal rumble that was. We're going to have to go to the judges. They'll be looking at style, control, damage and aggression. Grim Reaper, I've got a bit of extra help. While you're down there, can you give Noel a haircut? While they're making up their minds, let's have a look at the highlights. Professor Noel Sharkey puts his head in his hands and thinks. And as he thinks, let's see where the points were scored. Storm 2. Storm 2 again. Pushing. Stylish control. Aggressive. What damage was caused? There. Damage caused to the Grim Reaper. Perhaps that was the most decisive moment of all. The judges still haven't made their decision. I think Grim Reaper's making them nervous. Join us after the break to find out who goes through here on Robot Wars. And as well as that decision, Craig, we'll have our last round one fight of this semi-final. Two flippers once more, M2 and Atomic. And don't forget, if you don't first succeed, flip, flip and flip again. Still awaiting the judges' decision on this semi-final round one battle between Storm and the Grim Reaper. One of these is teetering on the brink. Elimination. Which one? Before the break, we had a fantastic battle. The judges have finally made up their minds based on style, control, damage, aggression. And they've gone for Storm too! Definitely. Yeah. I mean, that is a battle royale for us. Yeah, they had a bit too much for you, though, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, the robots are pretty knackered. Yeah. <laughs> you know. They couldn't play out the arena, though. Oh, no, they never will. They kept giving you piggybacks. Oh, he's <laughs> like that. Um, great driver. Yeah, very good. It's a very good robot. All credit to him. It was a good fight. You'll come back. You can't, you... Yeah, definitely. All right, guys, let's hear it for Grim Reaper. Oh, yeah. Very magnanimous in defeat. But you have got some robot, haven't you? Yeah. We're quite happy with it. Uh, how fast does it go? About 25 miles an hour. And it's very low to the ground, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, uh, total height's about 160 millimetres. Um, do you fear any flippers? Can anything get underneath you? We'll have to see, but uh, yeah, I think one or two might pose us a few more problems later on. Yeah. What about the spinners? I mean, there's an awesome spinner out there. There is Typhoon there. They're looking nice, but... Uh, Can that do any damage to your shell? Well, we've got 6mm titanium all around the sides, 12mm on the front. Yeah. We think they'll cause as much damage to themselves as they will to us if they hit us. Yeah, but uh, the force that it hits you with, could it dislodge anything inside? I mean, Well, we hit the walls with that sort of force. You do hit the wall a lot. Our arena's taking a right pace in any time you've yeah, been in the arena. Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, go ballistic for Storm 2! Still surviving, and don't forget to go through to the grand final. Firestorm, Typhoon, Storm 2. Next up, Atomic and M2. Let's see how they got this far. M2 took on and beat Tiberius 3 in the Heat A final. The first Heat in this Robot Wars epic journey. 
Meanwhile, Atomic in Heat G was too strong for Terra Turtle. Hell bent. And then the number 13 seed, Smitty. Cease. From Arley in Worcestershire, Atomic. Back for a third tilt at the title. Atomic lads, semi-final. It's getting exciting, isn't it? Yep, yep, it sure is. How are you feeling? All right, actually, not too bad, not too bad. We're against the flipper, so, you know, you're not going to come out and get completely wrecked, so it's going to be good. This round here, I've just got to say, it's, uh, you're all feeling, sli it's feeling really cool. There's, like, three cucumbers standing here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> got a few nerves. Nerves. You are the driver, David. What yep. are your tactics going to be out there? Well, I think we're going to get flipped, so just see if we can spar with them. And have a bit of fun, hopefully. It's the slower of the two, has the high pressure flipper and spike, is reliable, has gained experience through this competition. From Totten in Hampshire, M2. Has enough power to break the M2 motorway speed limit. You are fighting Atomic. Yeah, another flipper. Two flippers, so many flippers, yeah. so little time this year. Should be some great somersaults. Should be some yeah. great ones. They are very powerful. Have yeah. you seen them in action? Yes, we saw them in their last fights. Yeah. What do you reckon? What's the tactics going to be then? Uh, basically, flippers, all you can do is outmaneuver them and, uh, and flip them around and see, you know, see if you can get them. If they take longer to self-right than we would. Uh, we can self-right self -right quite efficiently. How many seconds does it take you to self-right? Uh, ask the man. <laughs> well, about two seconds normally. It's all right? Yeah, but one of the advantages we've got over them is that we've got a lot more flips than they've got. So if we can get them to run out of gas, then we've got them. Can flip in attacking mode every two seconds as well. Has top speeds of 20 miles an hour. Very easy self-righting machine. And it's almost a full body flipper. Roboteers, stand by. Very close between these two teams, Paul and Jackie Cooper in the M2. And the Atomic team, Stephen and David Bebb and Paul Francis, the weapons operator. In the arena for the house robot, Sergeant Bash with the flamethrower. Matilda with the tusks and the flywheel. Exactly. Three, two, one. Activate. And off we go. This to complete. Our round two lineup in this, the second semi final. M2 self writing, atomic pressure rising, using up that precious gas. M2 dodging. So they want atomic to miss with their flips. I wonder what David Bev, the 18 year old driver of atomic, thinks of all that. Well, M2 look dodging. And they are playing cat and mouse. Come on, chase us, chase us. And atomic cutting down the angles. M2 rolling, that's okay, they're barrel shaped. Atomic is more of a, a bulldozer, isn't it? M2 has missed with a flipper. Oh! In underneath, roly poly. And uh, Atomic's flip nearly brought Atomic forward and toppling over there. 99 kilos, Atomic. So too is M2. There we can see the weapons operator of Atomic, Paul Francis, a farm manager by trade. Shepherding M2 across the arena and tossing M2 and M2 self writing. This is very tactical stuff out there and very tight and tense. This could be crucial. Atomic needs to push M2 to the arena sidewall and then flip. The effectiveness of flipping is largely dissipated if it's in the center of the arena. M2 flips Atomic. That's closer. That's more dangerous. That's CPZ territory. Call it patrol zone territory. And Sergeant Bash was waiting to come in. House robots can attack in there, of course. Atomic, I think, needs to catch up a little bit on the point scoring, maybe. Is M2 running properly, freely? Or is it bobbling there? Is one tyre punctured? I wonder. Let's see. We can get a better view of the underbelly. No, they look okay, the tyres. M2 self-riding, but they're the ones now using up the CO2. They just bump away. 
It'll rattle down the M2. And Atomic are closing in. And Atomic now for Mir on top. And Atomic has M2 on the sidewall. And M2 bounces. And rocks and rolls and dashes away. Look at the concentration. Two machines from the second semi-final will reach the grand final. For the losers, instant oblivion. No one remembers a Robot Wars loser. M2 perilous. Atomic has them in there. Oh, they need to get their blade down. There and now flat. That's it. M2 gone. Atomic wait at the moment. Cease. And went for the final flip. They got them on the arena wall. Positioned them. Got in underneath. Oh, that's good stuff. Well done. Whoa! It's named after a motorway. And M2 hits the road. Atomic, they go storming up. I said you were named after the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you hit the road, and you certainly did in the end. We did, yes. Yeah, it looked it like you looked on top of it for quite a while, though. Yeah, he's, he's very difficult to get under at the mm. front. Uh, he was given us no opportunity to get around the back of him, so all the sides. So yeah. uh, there you go. You had him in the corner. You had him nearly out of, the, out of the arena. Yeah. I, Almost. I really thought. Almost had him there. You were going through. Yeah. It was a good fight. Well, we enjoyed having you in the war zone. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise the roof for M2. Well, the Worcestershire farmers. While you're here, who's milking the cows? <laughs> well, we've left Dad in charge of all that. Dad's in charge, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, great fighting when you were cornered there. Oh, hey, I, I thought, thought you were going. Heart was going, heart was going for a minute. Yeah, I, mean, I thought you were going out then. Yeah, well, you did. fought back, you took on Bash and everything got out of... And then, woo, turn the tables. It was a roller coaster of a fight, that one. You still have plenty of gas left? I think so, yeah. yeah. It lasts quite a long time. Um, no damage, really, to the robot there? Yeah, we'll have to check it, but it look, looks like it could be OK. So, uh, you're, you're marching on. You scared of anyone now, or you just take each fight as it comes? Yeah, they're all pretty good, so you just go take them as they come. Yeah. I'm scared of Typhoon. Yeah, he's I, good. I reckon that can so do some bad. damage. That's only been fighting on half speed so far. So, he, honestly, under really? half speed, so he can crank that up even even more. So it's pretty bad then. So it's pretty bad then. <laughs> Try and avoid that one, ladies and gentlemen. They're great competitors, a great robot. You've improved it every year. You keep coming back and it gets better and better and better. And now you're one of the big boys. Let's hear it. Atomic! Confirmation then that Atomic joins Storm 2, Typhoon 2 and Firestorm 5 in the second round of this semi-final. Let's see how they've been drawn. Storm 2 will fight Firestorm 5 and Typhoon 2 meet Atomic. Storm 2. Very progressive, very impressive. The machine of Ed Hobbit, Tim Benson, Meryl Kolak. Firestorm 5. The old stages. Will they again finish third in the competition? Can they win it this time, Graham Bone and Hazel Heslop? Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots, Growler. First time we've seen him in the semi-finals. Matilda in there again. Three, two... Storm 2 is the most impressive robot of its type since the emergence of Tornado. Might even be better than Tornado. Want to survive here though against the formidable flipper that is Firestorm 5. And for me, only a game of opinions, the best driver in the competition in Graham Bow. Backing away. <laughs> Isn't that just like it? I say he's a good driver, he hits the arena side wall. That's in underneath Storm 2 though. And the Storm 2 bounced, did something come away? I don't know whether you noticed that. Firestorm 5 again crashes against the arena wall. As Hazel looks on. Design draftswoman by trade. Ah, Storm 2 behind Firestorm 5. That's interesting, in underneath. Pit was released. 
Down it goes. Firestorm 5 dangerous. This for a place in the grand final. Firestorm 5 have been there before twice. But Storm 2 suddenly look menacing and they're on top, I would say. They have the side skirts to ward off flippers. They have the aggression. They have the 18 horsepower drive. Firestorm 5 is piggybacking its way towards the pit and just turns out in the end. That's good driving. Oh, slammed against the angle grinder. Storm 2 is getting stronger as this fight goes on and Firestorm 5 weakening. The veterans need something. Storm 2 again, the push, Firestorm 5 gone. No grand final this time for Graham and Hazel. A wedding day to look forward to. But no grand final day on Robot War. Storm 2 through. Turn up for the books. The 16th seed beat the second seed. Storm two through to the grand final. So, oh, what went wrong? The player that we got at the front got bent. Yeah. And then we couldn't get under them. We got under them a couple of times until it got bent, and then we uh, we lost it. So they're very low to the ground, aren't they? Very low, yeah. And so once you were bent up, you just couldn't get in. That's right, yeah. So you're very popular. We hate to see you go, but you never seem to, to, to do the business when it really counts. Yeah, I say there's, there's a lot of good new robots coming through. They are. Um, say, do something different next year. Yeah. Same robot, a few mods still. Yeah. I think you've got to, you've got to d develop a killing streak as well. You're just a bit too nice. No. He is nice, isn't he? <laughs> So when are you getting married? Next June. You're getting married next June? Yeah. <laughs> That'll keep you out the shed, won't it? Won't it just? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a robot, what a team. Let's hear it for Firestorm. <laughs> Lad, he took out the second seeds. 16 seed takes out the second seed. I know, that is a turn up for the books, isn't it? There's only one left from there, isn't there? I tell you what, um, do you think you can have Tornado though? Because I mean, you know, you know I like reminding you, you, you are do. a kind of tornado based robot, really, aren't you? Same concept. Yeah. Um, fancy going head to head with them? We'd love to. Do you think you can have them? Yes. You think you're going to win this, don't you? Oh, yes. You really can. We're in with a chance now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a robot. This is Storm 2. the break typhoon go head to head with atomic for the last place in the grand final keep it here keep it robot wars coming up after the break the last place in the grand final up for grabs between atomic and the flipper and typhoon 2 and the full bodied spinner of the edinburgh air cadets Welcome back. Just before the break, we saw the demise of the second seeds firestorm. The storm force is gathering. Welcome back to Robot Wars and the last of our series semi-finals. Before the break, one more robot won a place in the grand final to be held next time. And now there's just one place left. Welcome to the Last Chance Saloon. Storm 2 through to the grand final. Who will join them? Atomic or Typhoon 2? Jane to the pits with Atomic. Atomic, you've got your arms folded there. Are you a bit nervous about this one? Pretty nervous, yeah. What are your tactics going to be against the Typhoon? Uh, I think try and stop their blade as early as possible. It seems to be the only tactic against them. You have got an amazingly powerful flipper there, though. Yeah. It's, it's good. Just flip him? Is that... You're going to go all we, It's all we can do. You have been doing a lot of damage out there. You're now about to face Atomic. Mm -hmm. What do we think? Um, well, they're a flipper again. Um, they look impressive, but we'll just have to see what happens in the arena. Do you like flippers? Are flippers your friends? No, not really.
Atomic. So we have the high pressure flipper. And we have the team there, Stephen and David Bebb and Paul Francis on the weapons. Typhoon 2. The Edinburgh Air Cadets flying off Peter J. Bennett. Corporal Gary Cairns driving. Sergeant Graham, Paul in the middle. And the fan club. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots, Cassius Chrome. It's a killer lot as well. Three, two, one. And the winners of this will complete our grand final lineup. Again, Typhoon 2 manoeuvring to build up speed, but Atomic saw the danger, cut across on the angle, got in there quickly, trying to get it over and done with, and they flip themselves over. Can they self right from there? They're venting gas. Typhoon 2 stands off. Atomic wanted to get it over before Typhoon 2 could get up to full spinning capability, full gyroscopic speed. And they've done themselves in. There's been an atomic implosion of some sort. Whoa, look at that speed for Typhoon 2 now. Listen. Listen. The Typhoon is nearing. It is closing. Oh! Momentarily, Atomic was in the eye of the storm in the calm until Typhoon 2 came in and again oh Atomic is beaten in a way they beat themselves perhaps that was the only tactic open to them they knew Typhoon 2 is suspect before it gets up to that maximum speed The buzz and whirl! I think we could be looking at a potential champion here, not him. Paul Francis beaten, Atomic beaten. Typhoon 2 is going to take some stopping. The Atomic boys, unhappy they took so much damage. And Atomic counted out, leaving Typhoon 2 to join Tornado and Storm to an exterminator in a very strong final lineup. The innards exposed of Atomic. And here's our resident house surgeon to get into those innards to kill a lot. Go oh, on, it's taken enough damage. Having come this far, let poor old Atomic. R.I.P. Rust in pieces, as we say on Robot Wars. After the FFFF floor flipper, flippability factor. Go on. I put you up. Oh, dear. Flying through the air, Atomic comes crashing down. With hardly an explosion. More like a crumple. Oh, the end of so many dreams. Like so many of the vanquished before them. What a battle! Atomic meltdown! The typhoon roars all the way into the grand final! You look, you look the worst. You look absolutely gutted. No, I'm all right. I'm getting back home now. Yeah. <laughs> um, you took a, took a, a beating there. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened quite really because we, we got started off quite well. Kept them slow. That was well, the you plan. did. I mean, you, you, you dashed out. Yeah. You nearly then, flipped it. Yeah, and then suddenly we ended up on our back and we couldn't get back. We got stuck. Right. That was it. It's destructive, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think it was a shock of the first hit. Just managed to do something. And there's no disgrace going out to a robot like that, is there? No. Ladies and gentlemen, what roboteers raise the roof for Atomic? <laughs> <laughs> now, is that top speed now? Um, not quite. Not quite. How much have you got left? Uh, just a bit more. Just a bit more. Oh, you must feel 
a bit proud of yourself coming up with such a good robot. Yeah, proud and scared at the same time. The beast you've unleashed. <laughs> <laughs> so you think to the grand final? Mm -hmm. Everyone, everyone's scared of you. Nobody wants to come up against you. Ladies and gentlemen, what a robot. This is Typhoon 2. <laughs> Atomic meltdown. The Typhoon roars into the grand final of Robot Wars. Bye-bye. <laughs>to the grand finalists exterminated the number 11 seeds tornado the reigning champions typhoon 2 the only unseeded team left in it and storm 2Next on Challenge, we are back with our special survey and pointless celebrities. An over on pick alien body doubles for the crew of Stargate SG-1. One hundred and twenty-eight robots started out. Only four remain. The grand finalists of Robot Wars. Three. The Seventh Wars. Two. It's the one we've all been waiting one. for. Activate. Let the wars begin. Storm two. The champions. Tornado. Exterminator. Typhoon. Make some noise. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the master of mayhem, Craig Charles. This is it. The battle to push all others into the pit of oblivion. Because tonight, my friends, it's Robot Wars, the Seventh Wars, the Grand Final! Over 16 heats and two semi-finals. 128 robots have entered the war zone. But now, only a furious four survive. All hoping to win tonight's top prize of £5,000. But it's about much more than that. Because are you ready to find a Robot Wars Supreme UK Champion! Before we unleash hell, let's relive the road to Armageddon. The New Blood Champions have looked tremendously impressive throughout this UK Championship. Great pushability on tracks in round two of Heat Eye. They've gone for Storm! After the judges' decision, it was a lot easier against Steel Avenger in the Heat final. Didn't expect that to happen. We did not. We thought we'll just pummel them into the corner, and before we knew it, they were just off. Gaining a reputation as a mini tornado, Grim Reaper next up in the semi final. Another judge's decision. And they've gone for Storm 2! Grim Reaper beaten. And then one of the major shocks of Robot Wars the Seventh Wars, the second seeds, Firestorm 5, also dumped. The 16th seed beat the second seed. Storm 2 through to the grand final! Very quick, good pushing ability, Storm 2. Tornado, the defending champions, started their trophy defence in sluggish fashion. Leveller 2 flipped them, but then you saw the durability of the champs. Leveller 2, pity, but what was clear, Tornado wouldn't have it all their own way. A lot of good flippers, a lot of good discs. It's uh, getting very hard now. Tornado. It's been around a while, but yeah, it still does the job. Some of the rustiness was removed with a good heat final victory over Tetanus Booster. They got the jab. Another victim in the pits.
Everyone wants a piece of you. Do you think you can survive in the arena and go all the way again? We'll do our best. We might do it. The semi-final showed Tornado getting back to its best. Raging Nightmare shunted. In the pit again. But the hardest challenge was yet to come. Da, 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 da. Gravity. Very good flipper. Very, very, very good flipper. But here's where the tactics and expertise of Andrew Marchand and the team came to the fore. Positioned, set up for the fall. They didn't disappoint. Four victims in the pit out of four. Tornado, the champions, the first seeds, they go through to the grand final! Can Tornado emulate the great chaos too and defend the title? From pushing boxes to an enormously powerful spinning disc and exterminator. Too strong for Killer Carrot too. And a rarity. A spinning disc pushes one out. Do you know, I'm not sure if, a, if a, you know, a circular weapon has ever taken a robot out of the arena before. No, I think it's only Matilda that has done it so far. So yeah, but not a contestant. Modified from previous robot wars, Exterminator in trouble in their heat final against Tsunami. A flipper. Will others have picked up on weaknesses? Will others fear the strength? One blow from the circular saw and the big wave was calmed. Exterminator in the semi-finals. That robot has never worked that well before. No, we've ditched the axe and it was a good move by the looks of it. Gaining in confidence, gaining in power and destructibility. St. Agro shredded. Pitted and beaten, and then on to Bulldog Breed for a place in the grand final. It's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a good battle, but he never gives up that Bulldog. No, nor do we. No mercy against the dog. Watch for the power of Exterminator's weaponry in the grand final of Robot Wars, the Seventh Wars. It'll make you wince. Exterminator through to the grand final! Could be X-rated. Exterminator. Could this be the most impressive, though? The machine of the Edinburgh Air Cadets. Typhoon 2. Look at the power against Hammerhead 2. And we haven't seen the best of it yet. We're only vulnerable to flippers if we're not spinning. So we're going to start spinning as soon as we can. Spinning quicker and quicker. Iron ore felt the force. Stunned. Battered. Tell us about the features. Sorry, I can't. Oh, it's top secret. Yeah, military secrets, mate. Secrets and lies. Thormador soon found out the grisly truth in the semi-final. Our strategy is to immobilize our opponents using our disc. But, however, our tactics, I'm sorry, I can't tell you there. Military secret, of course, I keep forgetting. We've not been able to find out anything about Typhoon. Atomic did, though. They got in a couple of attacks. Is Typhoon vulnerable? Not when spinning at top speed. Watch for this in the grand final. The Typhoon roars all the way into the grand Typhoon whip up a storm. Just wait and see. The draw so important. Look at that. Storm 2 against Tornado. And Typhoon 2 meet Exterminator. Craig. So, four robots, one war zone, one winner. Join us after the break to find a new Robot Wars UK champion. Welcome back to Robot Wars and the Grand Final! This is Fight Time! From 
Sawtree in Cambridgeshire and number one seed, Tornado. Reigning champions and previous World Championship semi-finalists has all the knowledge of the war zone. You've drawn against Storm 2, what are you going to do? Well, it's going to be a pushing match, isn't it? <laughs> Two robots designed to ram, designed to push. Similar ideas. Controllers built by the same man, our very own Dave Gamble. So, uh, it's going to be interesting. Has three and a half horsepower drive on the weaponry, seven horsepower drive altogether. A pushing box with the interchangeable weaponry. Vulnerable to flippers, perhaps. From Ipswich in Suffolk, Storm 2. Impressed us as new blood champions and has got better and better. So, we've got to think tactically here. You're a very similar machine. Yeah. What are you going to do in there with him? Tornado's weakness is being stacked up against the arena wall. They've gone out before for being stuck against the arena wall. We're lucky if we get up there, we can probably work our way off with the arm. But they we think um, they're both, the most likely weapon they'll use against us is their scoop with a flail that comes through it. So if we can get round, get them into the arena wall and get them wedged up against it or stuck against it, we think we're in a really good chance. Absolutely crucial here. 18 horsepower on the drive, twice the power of Tornado, and also has a lifting weapon to expose that Tornado ground clearance. Roboteers, stand by. To the two teams then, Storm 2, Ed Hobbit, Tim Bentz and Meryl Kolach. And Tornado, Andrew Marchant on the left-hand side, David Gamble and Brian Moss with him. To Killox with them too, out in the arena. And Cassius Crowe. And this for a place in the final of the grand final. Three, two, one, activate. Two very similar machines. Tornado and Storm 2, both 100 kilos in weight. Storm 2 trying to get in underneath that ground clearance. You see it, shove them to the arena side wall. Oh, and they spun away and crashed into the wall themselves. Tornado, good driving away by Andrew Marchant. Very, very experienced. They're fighting for the fourth time in the wars. Now Tornado, the big heap out towards the angle grinder. Tornado, the experienced machine. Storm 2, the whippersnappers, the new boys. Came through the new blood championship route, gaining Automatic entry into the UK Championships. Tornado, an invertible machine, can run either way up. Can't get the front scoop in underneath Storm 2 in that mode, though. And Tornado on the defensive momentarily, and again... Oh! Some shove there from Storm 2. Tornado bouncing away. When you get two pushing boxes like this, it could come down to durability. Which machine can sustain most damage within? Not exposed damage, not superficial damage, but damage to the machinery, the electronics, and so much biffing and bashing. And Storm 2 doing the chasing. A storm and a tornado out there. And a battle that is blowing hot and cold for both. It's Storm 2, the aggressor there. But tornado turning away, dodging, good driving once again, good style. Won't mind going up and over Storm 2 like that, it's not sustaining any damage, and Storm 2 not really point scoring to any great degree. That was a good attack though. Tornado bouncing away, they know they're in a battle here, the defending champions, let's look at this again. Against the inner wall, fizzing away and bouncing down. Listen, can you hear the little flail? Tornado's little flail is not doing much damage, Storm 2 is though! The flail not doing any damage really for Tornado. And Storm 2 on top here. And the ref bot has pressed the pit release. And Tornado's been caught. <sighs> Just away. The champions were very nearly out. Tornado here, I think, on the brink of defeat at the penultimate hurdle of their title defence. I don't think we're going to see a repeat of Chaos 2's historic title defence as Storm 2 nags and gnaws away against the champions. It goes to a judge's decision. And they look at Ed Hoppett and Tim Benson, Meryl Kolak as their machine spins. What a way to kick off the grand final. A whirlwind in the war zone. Storm and Tornado. We're going to have to go to the judges. They'll be looking at style, control, damage. 
which might be important, and aggression. While they're making up their minds, let's review the highlights of that fantastic battle. Professor Noel Sharkey, Martin Smith and Matt Irvin look on then, the judges, as we review these highlights. OK, Tornado on the attack, but Storm 2 using the flipper. We said that might be Tornado's weakness, and Tornado being bashed here all around the arena. What damage did it sustain, if any? Well, the aggressive machine was Storm 2, that's for sure. Tornado very nearly caught and then stylishly away, but was that enough? Sense, isn't it? Uh, a little bit. The judges have made their decision. Your weapon was damaged, it wasn't working, was it? Because if you ever needed a weapon in a fight, you needed a weapon there. You were also very aggressive, weren't you? Yeah. They've gone for Storm! <laughs> Sorry to tease you there. <laughs> um, you taught them all they know about Robotieran. <laughs> It's the next generation of Tornado. Yeah. Yeah, it's more powerful, it's stronger, it's better armoured. Yeah. You don't work so effectively upside down, do you? No. And we've got scoops. no way of getting back over, so... Yeah. You were the UK champions for a year, you've lost mm -hmm. the title. Good year for you? Oh, it was great fun. You know, are you going to come back and try and reclaim your title next year? I think we'll have a go. Ladies and gentlemen, please, go ballistic for Team Tornado! Teaching the masters. Yeah, that was um. You, you, that was a bit tactical. That was um. You said the weapon wasn't working. The weapon was working. It worked, did exactly what it was designed to do. Turned them over. Really? I just didn't see it go up at all. It turned them over. That's why they were running upside down. Once yeah. they're upside down, all well, they you could didn't do was flip them back again. Yeah. They just ran up against us. There was. It would have been silly to turn them back. Yeah. Fair enough. One more fight to go, and you could be the new champions. Champion to the seventh wars. Who would you rather fight? I think we'd rather take on Typhoon. Why Typhoon? Because I find Typhoon to be the most destructive robot in the competition. Well, yeah, but you see, we've still got this very thick armor on the sides. So we'll, they'll hit it, and I think they'll cause as much damage to themselves as they will to us. Are you the fastest robot in Robot Wars? Yes. Yeah, but I mean, they're going to run away at first, aren't they? They'll try, but yeah. we'll catch them. You're about 25 miles an hour, is it? Yeah, you can't, unru you can't not outrun the storm. Oh. <laughs> The trick with what, what a tagline, sir. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little brain constantly Always. working, isn't it? Always constantly going. working, sir. Yeah. You can't outrun the storm. Can you raise the roof for storm? The end of the road for Tornado, out Storm 2 through, and next up Typhoon 2 and Exterminator, the Spinners. We've got one more to come and... Yeah. Um, it's going to be brilliant, this next one, really brilliant as well. Are you really excited? Yeah, I am, actually, I am. Look how excited Noel is. <laughs> Martin, are you pretty excited? Yes, I'm looking forward to the next one. From Belmont in Herefordshire and number 11 seed, Exterminator. This their fifth wars, their first grand final. You are up against Typhoon, which is another spinner. We have seen Typhoon cause some major damage in these Seventh Wars. What are you going to do against it? Well, their spinner takes quite a fair time to spin up to speed, so because ours only takes about three or four seconds, we're going to try and get to them quickly, straight away, like try and uh, get them over or immobilise them. Top speeds of only nine miles an hour. I wonder if they'll be quick enough to cut down the angle to make that opening attack, but does have a very, very potent spinning disc weapon themselves. From Edinburgh in Scotland, Typhoon 2. Model from previous middleweight and lightweight champions. This is a heavyweight, of course. Did you expect to get this far? No. We didn't even think we would make it past round one in the heats. Really? Mm -hmm. You've t the, the robot is beautifully made, and it, I mean, I, d I, c I don't know anything that's going to be able to penetrate that bodywork. I mean, it's so thick, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How thick? Sorry, that's a secret. You still can't tell me? <laughs> I'll maybe tell you before the grand final. Oh, <laughs> so you reckon you're going to get through? Possibly. 
Well, it's basically a rotating cone with a heavy steel outer ring and four rotating claw hammer cutters. That's what I can tell you. Duplex systems, a devastating rotating weapon and a dedicated military team. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the teams then. Marlon Pritchard and Simon Baldwin and Exterminator. And the Edinburgh boys, Corporal Gary Cairns on the left, Sergeant Graham Horn in the middle and Flying Officer Peter J. Bennett with them. And the fan club. So who's on duty? Well, for us, Dead Metal is. And Sergeant Bash. The army. Three. To get the RAF two. into line. Activate. Now, let's see if Exterminator can chase them down. I didn't think so before they could get up to spinning speed. Exterminator, I think, has missed its chance. I think they've missed their chance. Typhoon 2, too quick across the arena floor. And look at the spinning now. Listen to the whirring. Can you hear it? It's frightening. Like the noise that the doodle bug bombs used to make in the war. And it comes in and smacks into Exterminator. And that's good strength. The outer armor of Exterminator withstanding the first blow. Chips of metal fly away across the arena floor. I like the look of Typhoon too. But Exterminator digging in, trying to cut down the angle, and now uh, running away to hit the pit release. What's happened to the disc? Exterminator's disc is not working. One of the Typhoon 2 attacks must have crunched the electronics. The disc isn't working. I think actually the drive chain has come away. Exterminator now, impotent. Typhoon senses they can come in for the kill. Exterminator in trouble. Oh, buckled. Look at that. And ripped. You can hear the ripping of metal. I'm sure from where you sit. And look at the Exterminator boys, brilliant so far, Marlon and Simon about to head out. Unless Typhoon does something stupid and spins into the ball pit, very nearly bouncing off into the pit. They're going to have to watch out there. Captain of the team, flying officer Peter Bennett, looks at his controls. Typhoon 2 bounces away. They're trying to stay out of trouble. Sergeant Bash gives them a flick of flame. Exterminator still in this fight, very much so. Oh! Typhoon 2 smashing the smithereens part of the arena. Cease. And Exterminator as well. I think they've had to call a cease because, yes, the arena wall was damaged. Chain's going around to have a look. I've never seen damage in it like this before. Exterminator hopes bashed. Our arena smashed. Is it quite dangerous, Matt? It's not quite dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. Are you in it's danger sitting here? Well, no, we've got two layers. It only went through one layer. That layer it went through, they're both the same thickness. But remember, we've got the whole of the cage, the box, which has got the other layer, plus all the supports of it. Um, I wouldn't be sitting here otherwise. I have to say, I, with all the robots we've had, this is potentially the most dangerous. OK, what's going to happen now? The arena has been repaired. The judges are going to allow Typhoon 2 to get up to the spinning speed that it was at before the arena was crushed. The teams are OK. Three, two, one. And we're off and underway for the remaining time of this grand final battle. Oh, and as soon as we've started again, I think we'll have stopped again. Because for me, Exterminator, has just been beaten. One more smash from Typhoon 2 seemed to have done it. The house robot's checking. Is there a visible decrease in the spinning speed of Typhoon 2? Oh, there will be now, because Marlon has accepted defeat. Well, terrific competitors fighting in their fifth wars. They've never been this far before. Great improvements. Worthy, worthy opposition, but beaten. And now, of course, oh, that's nice, down in the pit, save it any more severe damage. It's had enough, hasn't it? It's not the championship decider itself. That place goes to Typhoon. Well, we reinforce the arena. Terminator, Typhoon, they go breezing through! We saw the fight. Uh, 
Um, they gave you a right good battering. Yeah. And then they kind of broke the glass mackerel on screen, which is supposed to be bomb-proof. Yeah. So we went and fixed it, reinforced it, and you wanted to carry on the fight. And it lasted about three <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Why did you want to come back for more punishment? Well, we're here for a war. We're not here just to... We're here to try and win it, so... Yeah. Yeah, like, like we're taking some damage. It was only going to be more damage, isn't it? Yeah. So, you never know. We might have got him in the pits, but... Was that the, was that the plan, that was, a, that was our only way out, was to get him in the, in the pits. Like. And because it, 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 it hits when it's spinning, it doesn't know what angle it's going to come That's off right. on, does it? Exactly, yeah. So it could always come off ricocheting. It's terrible when you see a robot you like get trashed. But get down there, get your spanners out. Start fix it. Ladies and gentlemen, please go ballistic for Exterminator! That's bomb proof, that mackerel. It's bulletproof. And we shattered it like glass. And you shattered it like glass? Everyone's like, Ugh. I can't wait for this final. It's the most exciting final in Robot Wars ever. Ladies and gentlemen, I bet you can't wait either. Let's hear it for Typhoon 2! But Exterminator and Tornado go head to head for the third place playoff here on Robot Wars. If you've just joined us, you've joined us in time for our grand final Storm 2 knocking out the holders, Tornado. And joined in the grand final by Typhoon as they beat Exterminator. Can't believe it. Another grand final is just around the corner. But to give our finalists a few more minutes to prepare, we've got an extra battle for you for third and fourth place. Here they are then, our two machines beaten already tonight. Tornado and Exterminator. Are they fit enough to compete? Third and fourth. Team Tornado, I see that, Andrew, you've got your arm protectively around <laughs> Tornado. <laughs> it's taken a bit of a battering so far, but uh, the damage has been OK. It's still going well. Still it's ready going to well. go. You are now in the Eliminator for the third place. Mm -hmm. You are up against Exterminator. They are working round the clock to try and fix that machine after yeah. Typhoon did the damage. Do you think they'll, they'll get ready? I think they're going to be very tight on time. They took a lot of damage, and although they're, they're working all out to get it fixed, I don't think they're going to get everything done. It's going to make our job a lot easier. That was an amazing battle out there. Yeah. You took some damage though, what happened? Um, the biggest problem in that particular fight was the it hit us very hard and it's, it's fried both the batteries, it's, the batteries are both dead. I mean, it looks twisted, it looks beaten up, but you, it's only superficial damage. It's only superficial and the disc will be working again for the next fight. Does it look okay to you? Exterminator. The machine of Marlon Pritchard and Simon Baldwin. Well, they look confident enough. Tornado. Seems to have stripped fitter for this playoff, for me anyway. Tornado. The reign of champions over for Andrew March and David Gamble and Brian Moss. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots, Matilda making her first appearance in this grand final. And Sir Killalot. Three, two, one, activate. This for third place then. Tornado quickly on the attack. Can get up to 10 mile an hour top speeds. Not great, but it's the fact it'll push all day long that makes it such a strong competitor. And I don't think Exterminator was ever going to be fully ready for this playoff. They came into the arena. They talked the talk. They couldn't walk the walk, could they? In trouble straight away. That spinning disc isn't working. And I think they Or is it? Yes, it is now, look. Just beginning to crank up through the speed, the spinning disc. Biting into Tornado. Scratching the front scoop. Bashing away. Not fully operational, not at its best as an exterminator. Oh, and turned over, I think, by a combination.
action of a tornado pushing one direction and Matilda's fly wheel spinning tail in the other direction, but they're okay, or are they? Look at Tornado. Poor old Exterminator taking some damage again. They've got hydraulic spikes out of the side, by the way, if you're wondering what those cones are all about. Not greatly impressive, but the spinning wheel has been throughout this championship. Oh, and I think that's a bit of a kill that's come off. They're taking a bit of a kill lot's armament off. Well, that's a trophy. They want to take home. Tornado on the attack, though, relentless as ever. And another slam from Tornado. Exterminator. How are the batteries in this playoff? Tornado still chugging away. The pit descends. Tornado. Not first place in the seventh wars. Third some consolation. As a little bit of a nut or a bolt goes running across the arena floor. Pushed into the CPZ. <laughs> With the pit release tyre. Tornado wants a little bit of that as well. Matilda's thinking about coming in. Oh, there's something shiny on the wheels of Tornado. Is that hydraulic fluid? Is that oil out there? They can't get any traction. They can't get out of the CPZ. But Exterminator won't be able to draw them into any more peril because they're about to be counted out. Out they go. Exterminator finished fourth. Tornado third, and Matilda can wreck havoc. Cease. Oh, devastating, explosive, bronze medal, a place on the podium, third place goes to Team Tornado! But you'd be happy if you never saw Matilda again. Yeah, we were cringing a bit there. <laughs> you had a lot of repairs to make. Yeah. To the robot. Yeah. After the fight with Typhoon. Got most of it together. I don't, I don't know whether that's what's affected it now. It um, cut out on us. All the drives cut out. Even, um, even so, the weapon was working splendidly well. Yeah. It was, all right. it was going all right. They're a hard, hard robot to fight. They dog you down all the time, don't they? You've got, you've got to be there attacking. Or... It's like an Energizer bunny, isn't it? It just keeps coming at you. It goes on and on and on and on. It's like a piston. Yeah. You're great competitors. We love having you on Robot Wars. We hope all that damage isn't going to cost too much and isn't going to stop you coming back no, we'll for back. more carnage. Let's hear it. What a robot team. Exterminator! Well, you go out on a high at least. <laughs> yeah. Having your mate Dave sold all your secrets <laughs> to Storm, and um, the masters got sort of lessons from the students, really. When you were trying to get them in the pits, mm. um, I noticed that your wheels were just spinning and they were all wet. What was all that? Matilda managed to clout the side of Killer Lot, and so there was hydraulic oil leaking out of Killer Lot all over the place. And we were sitting there, we had full throttle on, and Tornado was going nowhere. All yeah, the wheels were spinning. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, they were great champions. They're a great robot. They're great guys. Go ballistic for Team Tornado! <laughs> This is the one we've been waiting for. A hurricane of action in the grand final between Storm 2 and Typhoon 2. Oh, yes. It's all come down to this. And two awesome robots are now preparing for the fight of their lives. Well, this is really gearing up to be one of the most explosive finals ever in Robot Wars history. This is the Seventh Wars final. We have got the destruction of Typhoon ready to go and the power of Storm on this side. I'm going to go to you boys first. Now, this is your first time at Robot Wars. It is. And here we are in the final. Mm -hmm. Amazing. We didn't even think we'd make it past Heat 1. Well, you're in the grand final now. Yeah. Um, the last, the last battle you were in, you tore Exterminator to pieces. We did. How, how much power were you actually running out there? Um, we were nearly at full, around about 
Sir? Yes? How are you feeling? Well, I'm very, very pleased to be in the final of Robot Wars, and it really is a testament to the engineers that have been helping the cadets uh, to get this far and interest them in engineering. It is an amazingly powerful machine. I mean, do you think you're going to be able to take Storm 2 on, though? They're a very powerful machine themselves. Well, as before, if they get to us before we can spin up and, and stop us spinning, we're in deep trouble. But if we do manage to spin up, then you've seen the destruction that that uh, machine can, can wreak. Good luck, lads. Ed. Mm. You saw that last fight, did you? Against the Exterminator? Yes. Yes, I did. What did you think? Uh, I think I did very well. I was very impressed. <laughs> um, but Exterminator is a weakly built robot. Aluminium chassis, very, very thin scoop. Scoots only made out of two mil thick titanium. Um, I don't know how they're going to fare against us. I've never hit anything as hard as this. So um, I'm quite confident. Uh, I think we've got the speed to catch up with them. Uh, Gary was saying that he, his tactic is to, is to run away, basically, and spin up to speed. So they'll be tactically running away from us. We'll be tactically chasing after them. And um, once we get near them, once we get that disc stopped, I think it's going to be curtains for them. We can flip them over. We can put them where we want. To be honest, I'm not particularly bothered about them. Storm 2. Very strong, very quick, very impressive. Meryl Kolach, Tim Bentz, Ed Hoppit. Typhoon 2. The rotating cone with the claw hammers on the side. The machine of Corporal Gary Cairns, Sergeant Graham Horn, Flying Officer Peter Bennett, their teammates. Roboteers, stand by. The frenzy building. Jane's got caught up with it. She's right by the side of the arena. Matilda's in the arena, in the war zone, for the house robots. And completing our gruesome twosome is Three, a killer lot. Two, one, activate. This for the UK title, champions of the seventh wars. Typhoon 2 allowed to get up to spinning speed and bouncing away. Deflected away off Storm 2's front scoop. Or maybe the side skirt. Now that's interesting. Certainly withstanding the first bash from Typhoon 2. Only a deflecting blow, nothing more. They look pensive. This is going to be the hardest battle they faced, the boys from the Edinburgh Air Cadets. Storm 2 giving chase. Surely they can't expect to get in underneath Typhoon 2's ground clearance. It's half a centimetre, but they're moving too quickly, I would have thought. Again, deflecting away. Piggy backing up on top of Storm 2, and Storm 2 lifting Typhoon 2. Very close to the arena wall. If it goes over, that's it. They're right in front of Jane over there. If it does go over, it's all over. But Typhoon Ooh. lives to fight. Another moment or two. This is close stuff. Now, they're vulnerable when they're not up to full gyroscopic speed. And at the moment, it's like pinball out there. And again, Storm 2 giving chase, and Typhoon 2 is really up against it. Storm 2 with the pushing power of a tornado and the clever use of the flipper of a, of a firestorm is really on top here now. Typhoon! Oh, slams another great chunk out of the arena! Smash the arena! Smash the arena! Seat is called! They smashed the arena! Second time this has happened in the grand final, Jane! It's done it again! Smash the arena once again! That is one powerful, powerfully destructive machine ever, Derek. They've done it again to your beautiful arena. They keep breaking my stage. They're terrible, aren't they? Derek's very upset about this. We'll mend it. And we'll go again. No problem. Judges. What do we think so far? Well, it's very even so far, isn't it? Very it's a even. real shame they've destroyed that uh, sheet out there, but uh, I, I don't think it's a huge problem. Perhaps Storm at the present moment is ever so slightly ahead, but it can go either way. We've got to see the damage, as Noel rightly says. So it could go either way. It is just an amazingly explosive battle. As you can see, the arena's now in bits, but they're going to restart it very soon. The, uh, <laughs> 
do you think, guys? Should Typhoon 2 and Storm 2, should they keep on fighting? The audience want them to keep on fighting while they're deciding whether they're going to go back into the war zone. We're going to have to take a quick break. Come straight back here. This is a wicked grand final. Robot Tornado clinching the playoff, but the grand final between Typhoon and Storm was halted at that point. Welcome back. Now, before the break, there was some major controversy here on Robot Wars during the grand final between Typhoon 2 and Storm 2. We had to stop it. Well, the arena has now been repaired. But what about the robots? Well, Craig, I can tell you, the two grand finalists are back in the Robert water. Is stand by. Typhoon 2 and Storm 2. And the judges once again allowing the Typhoon 2 team to spin up the speed they were at before the cease was called. Three, two, one. Storm 2 on top before the cease, according to the judges, and again pursuing Typhoon 2. Typhoon 2 take off, bounces down again. Matilda very close. Storm 2 pushing them into that CPZ and trying to lever them out of the arena. Storm 2 notching up points by the second here, and by my crew reckoning ahead in this grand final. And the Edinburgh Air Cadets team look mighty, mighty worried. I think the way they reached this grand final would have had them as favourites. Oh! And just then, angling away off the pit of a little chink, maybe, on the arena floor, but they're very close to the pit this time. The pit has opened. Typhoon 2, was that a turning point in the final as they just moved away at a curious angle from the pit? Storm 2's chase has slowed. Very curiously, I think that was a turning point as they literally turn right and Typhoon 2 under pressure again from Storm 2 but is it just me or is there as much menace about the Storm 2 push now perhaps there is they've got Typhoon 2 into the CP7 and it comes with Tilda and certainly the grand final favourites are up against it here Storm 2 closing again Typhoon 2 can't get up to spinning speed very, very level still though, and only seconds remain. Storm 2 away. Oh, what's happened to Storm 2? They've taken some damage on the front. Where on earth did that happen? That is major damage. Major damage to Storm 2. As the grand final turned again. What a twister this was. The judges would have to decide it. Look at the damage later on. I wonder, I just wonder whether that will be decisive after all their hard work. Well, they are our three wise men. No question, Storm 2, the more aggressive. Early on, levering Typhoon to spinning submission. They couldn't spin. Typhoon came back strongly, I felt. Again pursued by Storm 2, a little hop and a jump. But they were spinning and causing damage at that moment. Leave it up. I think it turned there as they bounced away, dodged the pit. Storm 2 went in and somewhere here sustained major damage. That could be crucial. Because damage is the important criterion in the scoring, uh, it's important we're very clear about the damage that's done to each robot. The aggression is obvious, the control is obvious, the style is obvious, but the damage from where we're sitting is not obvious. Which way is it going to go? Nerve-wracking up here. The judges are still making their decision. One of the most controversial and incident-filled finals we've ever had on Robot Wars. I'm going to ask the audience, if you think that Typhoon 2-1 makes some noise! If you think that Storm 
I think you guys swung it, but as you know, it's down to the judges. The judges have said that style was won by Typhoon 2. They've said that control was won by Storm 2. They said that aggression was also won by Storm 2. They've said that damage, there's a bit of your robot back was won by Typhoon 2. Now, because of the way the scoring is awarded for those categories, damage carries more weight. They've gone for Typhoon! Judges aren't happy with the decision, but it was unanimous because of the way it's loaded in the scoring. How do you feel about that? A bit gutted. The judges did inspect the damage personally, and to be fair, Typhoon looks like a brand new robot. Mm. To lose one body panel against um, against Typhoon, where other people are coming out in a bin bag is is pretty good going. Yeah, you, you must be very proud that it's still in one piece. Oh, yeah. Uh, you won the New Blood Championship and you've just gone out in the grand final. You came second. I mean, what a robot. Uh, any improvements for next year? Yeah, I'm going to learn to weld. You're going to learn to <laughs> weld. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, what a robot. Go ballistic for Storm 2! <laughs> Controversy's never very far away in Robot Wars, as you know. True. Uh, but the judging system does say that damage is worth more and you do look like a brand new robot. Mm -hmm. OK, can you believe you swung it? <laughs> no, I did actually think that they would get it. So, you're the grand champion? We are. I can't believe you did it. Neither can I. You're an unseeded robot. We were. You've done some damage to some robots, mm -hmm. done some carnage. What's your, what's your abiding memory? What was your favourite fight throughout the wars? Um, probably the first one where we properly spun up against Hammerhead 2. So, hey, I'm chuffed for you. You've been a great team. Um, it is controversial, but yeah. hey, so what? You're the champion. You're going home with the medals. Can we hear it for the new grand champion in the Seventh Wars? This is Typhoon 2! <laughs> and to present the award, can we please bring on the stupendously beautiful Miss Jane Middlemiss? Congratulations. Cheers. Show the audience, you're the champions! <laughs> There's a new terror in the war zone. To give the applause. We've got a brand new champion on, on Robot, Robot Wars. Wars. Bye bye. time on Robot Wars, The Annihilator. It's our version of Metal Maniacal Musical Chairs. We start with six. Miss a beat, miss a trick, and your history. Last box standing wins! Next on Challenge, the pointless celebrities return with Alexander Armstrong. Underachieving, but looking ever so sure of his doing it. Over on pick, Harmony Thy Name is SG1. It's the Stargaters. <laughs> <laughs>